All right, hey, what's going on, everyone? James and I'm here. Welcome back to another YouTube video. And today we're going to be going over the petitions and voter registration statistics as of the week of June 8th, 2024. Now, as you guys can see here, petitions have expired for third parties already, but um, we're going to talk about the third parties in just a second. First, of course, we're going to go to talk about the, the two Raleigh petitions that are due on, that are going to be due this um, Tuesday. Hang on, is it Tuesday? No, today's June 8th, so I'm sorry, Sunday the 9th. Monday the 10th, Tuesday the 11th. Oh, it's going to be Wednesday. So, yeah, it's going to be Wednesday. And, um, I, yeah, neither of these petitions are expected to make it as of right now. So, and then some other news. Shiba Yadari has actually made some progress as a writing candidate. So, and all of his signatures so far have come from Brunswick County. So, that's straightforward. And then Teresa Hopper Prizer who's running for NC Senate District 31 as a write-in, has made some progress as well. She's, these are, here's what she's got her um, signature so far. And um, as of right now, that's going to be it for the petitions. And um, before I continue, I want to give a shout out to the forward party for alerting me on their newsletter. Yes, I am subscribed to their newsletter, and I'm so glad I did because they're the reason why I actually found out about this news, and I'm honestly fucking furious again. This year, okay, first it was 2022 with the Green Party, then 2023 with the delays from No Labels, and in 2024 already, we have the Constitution Party facing technical snacks, and the Veterans Party getting screwed by a rogue petitioner, and now this, this is happening, deja vu all over again for NC's third parties. Let's read this, shall we? And yes, I will put, and I will put a link in the description below. A report this week by Kyle Ingram of the Raleigh News and Observer revealed that an ugly tactic, that of a major party trying to build third-party candidates, trying to bully third-party candidates off the ballot to improve their own chances, has returned in North Carolina. Again. In 2022, the Democratic Party really, really wanted their candidate, former state Supreme Court Justice Sherry Beasley, to defeat Republican and ultimate victor Ted Budd in the U.S. Senate race. They made the calculation that this could not be done with Green Party candidate Matthew Ho along, appearing alongside Beasley as an option for left-wing voters. So they, so they decided to go all out trying to get Ho, whose Green Party successfully secured enough signatures, disqualified. To do this, Democrats would have to get many signatures that had been verified by their local boards. Okay, this is just a backstory. Okay, for those that are aware of this, of, the, of what happened... You know what I'm talking about, but for those that don't know, I'm going to continue reading because I need you guys to be aware of what's going on. To do this, Democrats would have to get many signatures that had been verified by their local boards of elections to be thrown out and would have to get legitimate signers to change their mind and ask for their names to be taken off the Green Party petitions, a process which is not laid out in law. They went to great lengths calling petition signers over and over, mailing them forms and visiting them at their houses. If the signers said they intended to sign and were not going to change their minds, in many cases, Democrat Party operatives would allegedly just call them right back to intimidate and annoy them into change, changing their minds. Carolina Journal was at the forefront of breaking the news and reporting on these tactics. Below is an exclusive video we obtained from a Green Party official showing one of these operatives trying to get him to change his vote, and going so far as to claim he worked for not for the Democratic Party, but for the Green Party. Oh yeah, I think I've seen this. The the the, the clip right there. If you guys want, I'll put the link in the description below. Is actually the one of the operatives trying to call one of the co-chairs of the North Carolina Green Party, Tony and Dege. And yeah, when this didn't work, the North Carolina Democratic Party and the National Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee, along with Party Super Lawyer Mark Elias, freaking Mark Elias then spent many months in court trying to find legal justification justification for why Ho should not be on the ballot. Ultimately, they failed, and Ho did appear next to Bud and Beasley. Of, of note, though, there was also a libertarian on the ballot, Shannon Bray, and Bray obtained almost double Ho's total, presumably pulling from right-of-center voters, but without much complaint from Bud. Yeah, because Ted knew he was going to win anyways. Of course, if it was like the Constitution Party, maybe there would have been some big man voters, just like what happened in 2020 when the Constitution Party did get some flack. I do, I do remember reading some of their some of the comments on their Facebook, and yeah. Anyways, also Ho got 
okay, you know, where was I again? So much for Ho being a third-party spoiler. Oh, yeah, he got, Ted Bundy even got a majority of the votes, so it really didn't matter. Also, Ho's total of 0.8% if added to Beasley per percentage, which you can still see below in the Ballotpedia graphic, would have only brought her to about 48.1%. Still 2.4% under Bud's 50.5%. The Democrats not only lost at the NC State Board of Elections and in court, which don't worry guys, I'm, we're getting to the big part soon, but it was also a very negative and persisting news topic for them. They do not seem to have learned any lessons from it though, and in 2024 it appears they are poised to repeat the strategy. As Ingram said in the NNO, those who signed petitions for third-party presidential candidates Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and Cornell West are now receiving text messages from a Democratic Party-aligned organization called Clear Choice. Wow! NC voters who signed petitions to help get RFK Jr. and Cornell West on the 2024 ballot received text messages questioning their decision from a Democratic group. Supporters worry it could be part of an effort to deny third-party ballot access. That's exactly what it is. This is get North Carolina is becoming unsafe for third parties. Why are they targeting us? The reason why they won't target independents is because independents, or should I just say unaffiliated voters, already have no chance. And, and considering that this is a statewide race, unaffiliated voters actually have to get like six times the amount and... Very few unaffiliated voters even make it to the to any of the ballots at all. Like I said before, like I said last week, Shalane Hutchinson and Laura Baker were a couple of the only unaffiliated um, candidates who actually successfully petitioned to get on the ballot. Like, that is hard to hear. Like, the success rate for unaffiliated petitions is terrible. So already, so if the third parties get screwed... It it's just gets worse for unaffiliated voters, and it's very frustrating. So anyways, let's continue reading. I'm pretty sure everything that they're doing here is to get us kicked off the ballot. Yes, Italo Medellius, co-chair of Cornell West North Carolina campaign, told Ingram. Ho is also quoted, since he has more experience than anyone with these tactics, and said, I'm annoyed, but I'm not surprised. The Democratic Party is going to be really focusing on putting a lot of effort into trying to keep third-party independent candidates off the ballot. We'll be keeping an eye on this as it develops to see if Clear Choice and their Democratic Party allies ramp up their efforts to the level seen in 2022. It will, unfortunately. Ingram linked to a Washington Post article that tracked Clear Choice, which has a PAC and an action arm? Oh my god. Directly back to Biden and Democratic Party staffers. They seed money also come came from the seed money also came from major Democrat donors Reid Hoffman, a billionaire who found his social media network linked in, and Ron Conway, another billionaire who made his money as a super angel investor in Silicon Valley, providing early funding to companies like Google, Facebook, Airbnb, and Reddit. Wow, 125k, 250k. Wow! Oh my god, wow! These are the kinds of billionaire donors who Democrats can rely on for big checks for random projects across ar around the country. Forbes magazine reported, for example, that when Biden needed cash to fund a writing campaign in New Hampshire, where he was unable to get on the ballot in the primary, Hoffman gladly gave the effort $2 million. The seed money for a clear choice is a minor line item in his political donations budget. All is fair in politics and war as long as it's legal, but sometimes legal tactics create a visceral reaction and earn bad press or even a new law. It'll be interesting to see if legislatures continue to allow this particular tactic. I swear to God, I don't think the Republicans are going to do shit about it. Already, Republicans are already getting backlash for their for the laws that are for what's going on what's going on currently in North Carolina with the um, ban in masks and. Um, uh, recently approving the ability for legislatures to destroy private di un private records, which is already receiving a lot of pushback as well. So, yeah, I don't think Republicans really care about this at all. I think they'll probably do the same tactics, and it's gonna it, it's gonna suck. Anyways, 
calling those who signed a petition for a rival party and convincing them, often harassing them to unsign, it seems like day after sour grapes. Should we allow the losing candidates to call those who voted for their opponent and try to convince them to switch their votes after the fact? Oh my god. Also, even though one is signing their real name, there is a little there's a level of anonymity that one expects in these circumstances. The person is signing to support someone, maybe even someone they don't plan to vote for being on the ballot. That's all. They are not volunteering to place themselves in the middle of a lawsuit or to have the personal information they provided given over to political operatives who then call them day and night. If the person signed, that should be the end of the story. And if there are any questions on whether they did in fact sign, the State Board of Elections should be the one to inquire since they are a disinterested party. Well, they're supposed to be. But while the tactic remains legal, third parties and those who sign their petitions can expect to be harassed in this manner by those who believe that having more options on the ballot threatens the viability of their own candidate. Ironically, many of these same people can often be heard shouting about quote-unquote threats to democracy. <sighs> this is complete and utter bull. Why the fuck is our state becoming authoritarian? Why is everybody trying to censor us? Why is everybody trying to basically attack third-party independents? It's really simple. They do not give a crap about what they believe in. The Democrats are not serious about what they believe in. The Republicans are not serious about what they believe in. And it's frustrating. We, we, I don't know what we can do, but all they can really do is fight because this, this is going to be a long fight and they need to fight. Because the future of our state, unfortunately, I think may have to depend on it. Anyways, guys, I'm going to go back and look up these statistics real quick. Here are the statistics for last week. And here are the statistics for this week. Now, once again, okay, let me, all right. Now, once again, voter registration has grown. Since this is a presidential election year, I think it's, I think we're at the point to where now the election campaign has truly started. And um, let's go over the results uh, for this week. The Green Party gained 120 voters. The Libertarian Party, unfortunately, was the only demographic to lose voters yet again. They lost 20. Luckily, not as bad as last week, but they're still losing. Like, that sucks. The No Labels gained 1,529 voters. The Democrats gained 1,060 voters. Republicans gained 8,627 voters. And lastly, unaffiliated voters are already pretty much got back all of what they lost, I think. With a gain of 21,463 voters, with and the unaffiliated demographic is about to reach 2.8 million by next week. <laughs> Honestly, thought that it would take a little longer, but I'm so happy about that. Hopefully, we can get to 2.8 million registered voters by the end of next week. Anyways, guys, I hope you all have enjoyed. I'll see you guys later. Peace out.